Welcome to the third video in this review of basic Greek morphology based on 12 core patterns. In this video we begin our overview of the third declension. It looks like a confusing collection of many paradigms or patterns, but in fact there's only one pattern behind the whole thing. The diversity comes from the endings undergoing various modifications, and so seeing the underlying connection to this one core pattern may help you make sense out of the variations and be able to remember the forms more easily and recognize them when you see them in text. Our core pattern for the third declension is the indefinite pronoun tis and t. Note several alternative forms in brackets. And so you should memorize tis and t with the brackets or simply memorize the set of endings. So those brackets in the neuter simply represent the nominative and accusative singular use a zero form but the brackets in the masculine and feminine column give alternative endings. So the nominative can be either a sigma or a blank, in other words a zero form, and the accusative singular can be either an alpha or a nu, and the accusative plural either an alpha, sigma, or an epsilon sigma. And different sub-paradigms or patterns within the third declension will use one or the other of those, as we'll see. Now, in fact, the epsilon sigma in the accusative plural never shows up in that form. It will be contracted. So if you actually see the letters epsilon and sigma, that will be the nominative plural ending. The key to the modifications are the stems of the words. There are six types of stem endings, which are going to produce six particular patterns to pay attention to. So we'll look at the first of these patterns in this video, and then in further videos we'll cover the others. Words in the first pattern have stems ending in one of the consonants in the square of stops. And so this square of stops is itself one of the 12 core patterns to learn thoroughly. And one of the endings in the third declension is a sigma. It shows up in the nominative singular of some patterns and in the dative plural in all patterns. So the square of stops shows us the changes that take place when a sigma is added to a stem that ends in one of these letters. So we have the labials that are formed with the lips, pi, beta, and phi, and they'll become a psi when a sigma is added. And then the velars, kappa, gamma, key, that are formed with the soft palate. These are also sometimes called palatals or gutturals, and they'll become a xi when a sigma is added. And then the dentals, ta, delta, theta, and zeta, and they drop out when a sigma is added. So with the core pattern and our square of stops, we have what we need to see this first pattern of the third declension. Notice first the forms over on the right. It's using the masculine and feminine endings from our core pattern. And then look down the actual forms that take place in the word in the paradigm, and you'll see that all the endings are clearly visible, except for the nominative singular and the dative plural, where that sigma combines with the stem in keeping with the square of stops. So here's an example in a passage. Now, very often there's going to be an article, but here there's no article to help you know what you're dealing with although the other data plurals might point you in the right direction. Well, whenever you suspect you're dealing with a third declension word and it has a stem ending in a labial velar or dental, then add a sigma to the stem to get back to the lemma. In this case, however, the sigma is already present, so the lemma is easy. And notice, as always, the genitive form is given by the lexicon, and that's especially important in these third declensions. Let's see another example. Here in Revelation 4-5, we have a third declension ending on a dental stem. The epsilon sigma is clear. It's going to be a nominative plural. And when the stem ends in a dental and you add the sigma, the dental drops out. So our lemma is lampas. So now we've seen the main features in pattern one. The book provides more details on how these endings work on each of the types of endings of the square of stops, but it's all along the same line as what we've looked at. So before going further, with other patterns in the third declension, let's pause and discuss the fact that several of these third declension endings also are used in the first and second declensions. So here we see both of the core patterns together, and the main endings to note are the omicron sigma, and the alpha, and the alpha sigma, and the omega nu. So the omicron sigma can now also be a genitive singular as well as a nominative plural. And the alpha and the neuters are the same as we saw before, but now an alpha also shows up in the masculine and feminine accusative singular. The alpha sigma, there's nothing new there. It's an accusative plural in both of these core patterns. And the omega nu, of course, shows up the same all the way across. 
So the Omicron Sigma and the Alpha are the main ones to pay attention to. So for example, if you see Kairuka in a passage, you might think this is a first declension nominative singular from Kairuka, or perhaps it's a nominative or accusative plural neuter coming from Kairukan. Here we see the form in an actual passage. And oftentimes there will be a definite article to help you know what you're dealing with, but here there is no article. And so if there's no clues to tip you off, then the lexicon is going to sort it out. And when you go to the lexicon, you won't find Kairuka or Kairukan. What you'll find is Kairuks. Now if you would suspected that this might be a third declension, then to look it up, you'll notice what the stem is. It's a kappa. And so you add a sigma, and that becomes a xi. And so you would have gone straight to the right word in the lexicon. But in any case, any of those words you were looking for, Kairuka, Kairukan, or Kairuks, would all be in the same place on the page. Sometimes, however, you may have trouble finding the lemma in this way, or the word you're working with may simply be irregular. Here we see the word triches in Revelation 1.14, and you can tell from the ending that this is a nominative plural for the third declension. And you see that stem ending, and so you expect the lemma to be triches, but when you go to the lexicon, you won't find that form. Instead, the lemma is threeks. So it turns out that this word begins with a theta in the nominative singular so it's simply irregular. Some lexicons provide help for such irregularities. So Danker's Concise Lexicon and Newman's Concise Dictionary, when you look up under the lemma beginning with tau, you'll find a note pointing you to threeks, as you see from the quotes that I've included. Other important lexicons, like Danker's Large Lexicon, BDAG, and Abbott Smith's Manual Lexicon, don't offer this help. In Using and Enjoying Biblical Greek, I mentioned several resources that cover irregularities and several resources for sorting out issues in a passage. For sorting out parsings and lemmas, in addition to the print resources, I also mention in the book a couple of websites, in particular Perseus and BibleHub.com. So let's take a minute and see how these resources would help us with such a problem as we've seen here with Threeks. Here's the home page for Perseus and you see all search options here in the upper right. Click on that and you'll have a text box you can type in your search. Notice the help they give you for how to transliterate. And so here's the lemma, threeks. And you see it gives a basic definition here and also links to several lexicons including LSJ. LSJ is the largest of the Greek English lexicons, Liddell, Scott, and Jones. And there you have a lot of information with a lot of text from classical resources. You click on any of those texts and it'll take you to that particular passage. You see how you have all these quotes and you click on any of these words. They're all hyperlinked and will give you the definitions and the parsings and so forth. There are a great many texts from the classical material, both Greek and Latin, on Perseus and they're all hyperlinked like that. So it's an amazing resource. There is actually a New Testament there too, the West Cotton Hort edition. Bible Hub will provide this kind of help when we're in the New Testament. So type in your reference and then go to Greek. And then you'll see a chart with the words and various information about them. Here's our word triches and the parsing is over here on the right. And on the left there's a number, that's the Strong's Concordance number, which will take you to a page that will give you the lemma and it will also include all the occurrences using the Englishman's Concordance. So you see it just lists all of them with a Greek text and translation. It has Thayer's old lexicon which has lots of good information in it, although it was out of date almost the day it was published because it was just before the papyri were coming online with their new information about words. And also some of Thayer's own analysis of particular texts will reflect his Unitarian theology so you can be aware of that as well. But there's a lot of good information there, even though it's not a standard lexicon. So both Perseus and Bible Hub are wonderful resources with lots of things to explore and are certainly very helpful for simple parsing problems. So here's a summary of what we've seen in this video. We've begun our exploration of third declension nominals and we're starting with stems that end in a consonant and we've seen our first set of such endings with the square of stops. In the next video we'll take a look at further patterns in the third declension that have stems ending in other consonants.